Today marks day 53 of operations to defeat ISIS in Raqqa. About 45% of the city is under control of the Syrian Democratic Forces. The SDF have cleared about nine square miles of terrain this past week as they fought against stiff, sporadic resistance from ISIS entrenched in the city. On the western axis, the SDF took control of a series of multi-story buildings that allowed them to provide overwatch and push further into the city center. On the eastern axis, the SDF made incremental gains south of the main road that runs east to west in the city. Currently, the distance between the east and west SDF axes is less than a half a mile. And once they link up, the SDF will have full control of southern Raqqa. And south of the Euphrates River, the SDF continue to isolate Raqqa and reinforce their positions. In southern Syria, the Shuhada al karitain commonly referred to as the Shuk, one of our partner forces there, unilaterally, without U.S. or coalition permission or coordination, conducted patrols outside of the agreed-upon de-escalation zone and engaged in activities not focused on fighting ISIS. The coalition only supports partner forces committed to fighting ISIS. The Shuk have been important partners in the fight against ISIS in southern Syria. However, the coalition will no longer support their operations. The coalition will support and train and advise and assist and accompany vetted partner forces in southern Syria that wish to defeat ISIS. You see that <clears throat> ISIS sh shoot down <clears throat> some RQ, uh, actually one uh, RQ-20 drone of SDF, allegedly. Are you aware that the SDF has those drones? Or do you know, or did you support, uh, provide to them? Uh, can you tackle this question? I have not uh, seen or heard of that report that you were referring to. Uh, I know that uh, we uh, do use uh, unmanned aerial su uh, surveillance devices uh, to provide uh, intelligence and what is going on uh, with ISIS activity uh, in Iraq and Syria. Uh, I am not uh, tracking the, the particular uh, instance that you are talking about. Uh, but I will also say that there are measures, uh, countermeasures uh, for uh, UAS uh, devices uh, that uh, that are in uh, areas throughout Iraq and Syria where we are providing support to our uh, partner forces. Does SDF has um, have drones or unmanned aircrafts? Do you know? I do not know uh, what uh, kind that they have. Uh, we know that. Uh, it is pretty, it was relatively easy to get drones and to use them uh, throughout the battlefield. Uh, we've seen that both from the enemy and from uh, partner forces. But bottom line is I don't know what type and uh, what kind they use. I have a couple questions. Earlier in, in your prepared remarks, you said that the coalition will no longer support operations of a specific group in southern Syria. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Oh, there you go. Uh, what was the group, what were the violations, um, what led to this decision? First, uh, I won't uh, try to uh, spell the, the name of the group, uh, but is commonly known as the, the Shook. Um, and they are one of the partner forces that we were working with uh, in and out of the Atanaf area in southern Syria. Uh, we have made it very clear uh, time and again that uh, our goal in Syria and in Iraq is to fight ISIS and fight ISIS only. And our partner forces, uh, we've asked them um, you know, to be committed to that uh, same mission. And uh, we had an element, uh, the a partner force that we were working with, who wanted to pursue other objectives. And those objectives were not consistent with defeating ISIS. So um, we uh, have since uh, talked with them and made them known that uh, we cannot support them if they want to pursue objectives other than defeating ISIS. And so that's exactly what we've done, and we are no longer going to support this particular group because that is, uh, that is what they want to do. Sure, a couple additional questions on that. Um, the background of the group, any sort of descriptors, uh, Kurdish fighters, um, the size of the group, 
uh, how long had U.S. How long had the U.S. been partnering with this particular group? And then were they were they targeting regime forces? Is that why uh, there was a, a break in that relationship? All right. So on a couple of those uh, questions, they are uh, native uh, from the area in and around southern Syria. Uh, around the Hamad Desert area. Uh, I'm not going to give the number of the element, uh, nor the number of, um, well, I won't give uh, the number of the, how many there are. Um, what I will also say is that uh, that group um, you know, did, I, I'll just say that they pursued other objectives that were not consistent with fighting ISIS. And, you know, you know fighting the regime could be one of those objectives. Uh, can you provide their background at all? Uh, no, uh, they were not uh, a Kurdish group. They were from uh, the area in and around uh, the Hamad Desert area, um, not far uh, from the Atanaf garrison. Colonel Dillon, I want to go back to what you call the, uh, the group Shuhada al Qaryatain. Could you confirm if, uh, first, if the coalition has warned the Shuk? before they conducted, the, before they have conducted their attack on the Syrian regime? Was there any warning? The, our partner forces, uh, uh, so warning, I will say that our partner forces know uh, and uh, made a commitment to uh, fight uh, ISIS. And they are partnered with us uh, as a part of the 1209 program to uh, do just that. So they knew uh, prior to um, uh, going out and, and uh, pursuing these other objectives uh, what the repercussions uh, could have been. Could, could you confirm if the Shuk still or left at Tanif area? Because they used to be part of the, of the, of the partner forces in the Tanif area. Are they still there or they have left? <clears throat> No, um, we, they are still there. We are in the, the process of um, ceasing our support and, uh, and receiving uh, the equipment that we provided to them um, you know, for the fight against ISIS. Would you be asking them to leave? Uh, I don't want to get into uh, too many details. Uh, again, we are still uh, um, working, not working with them, but we are in the process of ceasing our support, and what happens after that is uh, something that uh, I'm not ready to discuss right now. Yes, sir. Number one, I don't know how many, and I don't know if they have been told. To confirm on a on uh, the situation with the Shook, can you confirm that some of those are part of the VSO or that all of those are part of the, the VSO, the vetted Syrian opposition? And um, I, I believe some of those trained in Jordan, correct? Uh, they are uh, part of the vet, uh, vetted Syrian opposition. Uh, this was uh, one of those groups that, that fell underneath that. And uh, I, I don't know the answer to your second question about uh, where they were trained. You know, they were a, a partner force of ours, and um, you know, we can no longer support them because they don't want to fight ISIS. And one quick follow, a, a separate question. Um, some of those forces in Atomp, as has been explained to me, some of them are from the Abu Kamal Mayuddin area. Is there any plan in place to get them to where they can defend their homeland? Because right now, as Ryan was explaining, the Syrian uh, troops are kind of in between you guys and that area. Um, you're absolutely right. And some of those uh, vetted Syrian opposition uh, forces that uh, we still train are from our indigenous uh, to areas along the middle Euphrates River Valley. Uh, and, you know, can we leave on, you know, trucks and, and go straight uh, across to Abu Kamal and uh, Mayadeen and Deir Zor uh, without running into the regime? Uh, likely not. Um, but as far as a, any future plans on getting them into the fight, um, we will address that. Uh, and we believe that there will be an opportunity uh, to use them in the fight uh, against ISIS in the middle Euphrates River Valley uh, when needed. You mentioned retrieving the equipment that had been provided. Um, can you give us a little bit on what kind of equipment that is? And are you confident that this group who wants to conduct independent operations is going to willingly give up the weapons it has? 
those uh, discussions with the Shook leadership and our forces there are still going on. Uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you, you know, by serial number or even if we we're going to, not even if, but uh, the types of uh, weapons and equipment uh, that we are going to receive back from, from them. Meaning, you know, is there going to be small arms? Is there going to be all the vehicles? Is it going to be all their uniforms? Uh, I don't know that answer for you right now, but, you know, we are uh, going to, you know, uh, retrieve some of the equipment that we provided them to fight ISIS. Back to the U.S. forces inside Syria. We know that when the deployment happened um, at, at, among the, the forces deployed to Syria, there were engineering uh, folks as well. So can you say that the SDF forces are embedded or these this engineering folks are embedded within these SDF elements and what kind of engineering things do they train the SDF forces with? I can tell you I know that there are uh, uh, counter IED um, uh, training uh, that we are providing and, and making sure that our partner force in Raqqa can uh, face you know, some of these threats uh, that they are facing you know, right now. Uh, there have been several you know, IEDs and uh, that was well known. So uh, I don't know specifically which unit you are talking about. I know that we have our advisors that are uh, with the Syrian Democratic Forces, advising, assisting, and accompanying, um, but uh, I won't get down into are they engineers, are they um, you know, JTACs, are they who, whoever they are, um, you know, we're not going to talk about specifically you know, um, who is embedded with them, but we are uh, making sure that uh, they can uh, are ready to face and mitigate the threats uh, that they face. Um, IED is one of those. Colonel, what can you tell us about the Raqqa fight compared to the Mosul fight? How is it different? What are the challenges in Raqqa? Is it going easier than the Mosul fight? Thank you. I think that it is It's fair to say that the fight in Raqqa uh, is more similar to the fight in East Mosul than in West Mosul. Um, you know, the the infrastructure and the spacing of the the buildings you don't have uh, quite uh, the uh, congested and very tight confines of the old city of West Mosul uh, like you do in Raqqa, at least not at that magnitude. Um, you know, obviously Raqqa is much smaller uh, than Mosul as well. Uh, but there still are a lot of those challenges that uh, the Iraqi security forces faced in Mosul uh, with the vehicle-borne IEDs, uh, with uh, the, the use of uh, the human element and the population uh, to shield and uh, that the ISIS is using uh, that we saw in Mosul that we are seeing in Raqqa. Uh, so I, I would also you know, take account uh, the how quickly uh, that the Syrian Democratic Forces were able to uh, make immediately into the city, uh, but there have been uh, some stiff resistance since uh, making it to like the ancient wall area and as we've gotten closer into the city center. I hope that answers your question. It does, and how many ISIS fighters remain inside Raqqa right now? Uh, we estimate less than 2,000 uh, ISIS fighters still remain in Raqqa. And finally, whose idea was it to add the word democratic to Syrian democratic forces? I don't know. You, you would have to ask them, Lucas. Uh, last week, there was an expression of discontent by the Pentagon on, um, on a report by Anadoli Agency uh, showing the U.S. bases in Syria. Um, do you still have sa same concerns or are you satisfied with the Turkish government's um, uh, statements that uh, they, were, they were not the source of the leak? Uh, what do you make of the, what the position of the Turkish government? You know, while we, we cannot confirm that there is, we don't know uh, who provided this information uh, to uh, the Anandulu uh, agency, um, but it would be concerning if it came from a NATO ally. Uh, so, you know, we have expressed our concerns. Uh, we're going to continue to, to operate, you know, throughout northern Syria in the way that we have. Uh, and we do have force protection measures um, that uh, allow us to continue to focus on fighting ISIS uh, in northern Syria. 
you could speak to before severing or this ongoing severing of ties with the Shuk, um, when's the last time that the coalition broke ties with a member of or a group under the umbrella of the vetted Syrian opposition? Has this happened before? And if so, when when did it happen? We have not uh, had an, an incident like this uh, where we have had to cut ties with a vetted Syrian opposition group. This is the first time. Thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week.